Yes, sir, we promised you a great main event here tonight. Nick Andres, the China WrestleMania. Hulkamania is running wild. Yes. My God, what a yeah. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Shows and Extreme Rules Predictions right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, as always, Kyle Masters, and I am joined by my uh, two co-hosts, Not just one at the moment, the other one will join us soon. But uh, we will we'll be joined soon by the host that runs the West Coast, uh, Michael Chow TV. But with me right now to begin the show, because the show must go on, as uh, Michael Chow would want us to have it, uh, is the main event modern day Maharaja, Brian at Heel Turn 21. Brian, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? How you doing? Hide all your sheep. The Itsy Bitsy Spiders are out to play. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This week, man, I'm sorry, we rag on the main roster to you all so much, but this week, my God, there was literally no excuse for what they produced this week. And there isn't, because what happened this week, Brian, what happened? I, I, mean, I think I'm going to let you tell us what happened to Monday Night Raw this week. What, what was significant about Monday Night Raw? It wasn't anything about fucking sheep. It wasn't anything about uh, the quote-unquote big dog. It wasn't anything to do with... Um, uh, the itsy bitsy baller. Um, what, what was so significant about Raw this week, Brian? I'm going to let you share that with us. Well, Raw was a a bad show. If I can, if I can go there, um, we had, like you said, we had the to big dog. The we had we had the big dog. We had people fucking cheap. We had itsy bitsy spiders. Uh, and are we I watching? Even... Are we watching Monday Night Raw? Or are we watching some midnight adult cartoon on the Comedy Network? Like what was even, this Monday Night Raw? It, it it was Monday night. I don't know what the hell this was. It was it was bad. It was. I'm running out of excuses, Kyle. I'm literally running out of excuses. But I, I want you to just share with us the news we got after Raw this week on something significant happened to Raw that hasn't happened ever in its 25 year uh, existence. What happened to Monday Night Raw? What was the news out of uh, this week? While we're breaking records, we got the... <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> we're breaking records, ladies and gentlemen. When, believe it or not, after all this captivating writing, this great booking, week by week, we have literally hit a new low. The lowest of all rating in the modern era. I think they said the last 20 years, at least. Maybe of all time. Raw hit the lowest rating, let's just say, of all time. 2.2 is a 2.24 million viewers. Good job, Monday Night Raw. Good job. <laughs> Give yourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> uh, the lowest viewership rating ever since Monday Night Raw started. But no, what? <laughs> the billion, the billion dollar show. I mean, do you, why is I'm it seem? Sure why is it seem, Brian? That has. The money comes in. What I've noticed, the money comes in over the last couple of years. The more money they get, the shittier the product is getting. <laughs> and that's that's the problem is that they're making so much money that they just don't give a shit about what they put out because people are gonna eat it up anyway. It, they don't care. It's they're they're very very lazy. Um, we were just talking about before the show. Not even just with um, creative with merchandise. Has anyone seen the new Team Hell No T-shirt? Has anyone seen this? If you haven't, I, I, I prepare you. Prepare yourself when you go see this. Go into WWE Shop. Go over to the Team Hell No section. If they have, they, I wouldn't be doubt if they have their own section by now. But their t-shirt, their new t-shirt with the mask and the hands coming out of it. Are you fucking, are you serious? 
Yeah. It might Everything's as well be in a... pilot. Everything's in autopilot right now. Just draw a dog turd on it next time and put whatever's name on it. Just, <laughs> it's, it's bad. I don't. Uh, I've been watching wrestling since I was a kid, and for the first time in years, I I wanted to say I'm done. I'm done. You know, people do the whole hashtag cancel the network. Blah blah blah. I still defended WWE. I, I still go to the shows. I go to all the pay per views. Um, like we were talking to, uh, talking about before the show. I used to make watching Raw an event. Hmm. Now it, it just feels like a job. It's literally just background noise while I do everything else in my house. And it sucks. I don't want to sit here and rant on the main roster every week. I'm not going to be – I'm not this guy that sits there and will nitpick for – just for the sake of nitpicking Raw and SmackDown. It's how I feel. I've been watching wrestling since 2001. Okay, I've seen the Derby go through its uh, – uh, end of the Attitude Era, into the Ruthless Aggression Era, um, the, the the pre-PG Era, then it went into the PG Era where I stopped actually watching TV, period, for a good chunk of time, then it came back. Um, then we went through the, you can guess you can call it the Reality Era, um, which is uh, during the CM Punk thing and, and a little bit briefly after that, and to what we got today, and I guess you can, I'm not trying to put the Roman Reigns fans on a pedestal here, like, I'm is this is the Roman era because all the uh, Roman slash Brock era because that's literally the only two people they they focus on on this entire main roster. As much as you want to argue with that, that's literally the main focal point of Raw and SmackDown is Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Um, and, and Lesnar's not even there; he's on another show. Exactly, he, he appeared in the UFC. And he did that did that whole thing in the UFC on the weekend, and uh, they actually had some bad blood or uh, some bad taste in a lot of. Uh, UFC fighters' mouths. I guess a couple of them that came out and uh, and criticized the whole thing, saying this was too WWE eyes. If that makes any sense, um, yeah. it felt like a a WWE like promo. They were smiling at each other and just it didn't seem real. I mean, I don't blame them. I I agree with them. I just that's not our fault. That's not wrestling's fault. That's Dana White's fault. I mean, but you can't really blame him either because he's a businessman. The guy is yeah. looking to make money. He sees Brock Lesnar, and he's right. The Brock Lesnar is a draw. Right now, the UFC is not as popular as it used to be. Back in the day when Lesnar was there, GSP, Frank Mir, Lyoto Machida, like all those guys, UFC was at its prime back then. Now it's it's dwindled away, and you have Daniel Cormier, who's really the only thing going right now in UFC. Why wouldn't you want to go get Brock Lesnar and cause shit like that? Get people's eyes focused on the UFC. <laughs> yeah, as, as much as we're fans of, of Balor and Jeff Hardy, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, on the show, WWE and the UFC, they're obviously in bed together now. It's 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 there's no question about it. But Brock, as much as people hate on him, both on WWE and UFC side, I, I've used this example before. You know, Cena's not there, so take anyone you have on the WWE roster right now, take anyone you have on the UFC roster right now, and drop them off in any mall here in LA, any mall here in, in New York, no one is gonna know who they are. But if you drop off Brock Lesnar in that mall, the dude's going to get ambushed. You know what I mean? He's the only guy that's really over in both companies. He's the only na household name. And it, the show, show-wise, show it sucks for both UFC and WWE. But business-wise, it just makes sense. Yeah. It just, it, I, 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 it's a shame that they, they – I wouldn't mind them working with Brock Lesnar. I'm, I'm fine he's with WWE. He just needs to be on TV more. It's not fair to us fans who want to enjoy and see Brock Lesnar, him only appearing on TV like four times a year and wrestling four times a year. That's it's not what makes an attraction an attraction. So, yeah, and I mean, I know we want to talk Raw and SmackDown, but who really cares? Yeah, <laughs> this only this only so I, now that this is happening with the UFC, WWE, UFC is in bed together. I really think. That Lesnar isn't losing this title anytime soon. I think WWE, UFC, they're working together now. WWE's gonna want their title on Lesnar at the UFC. Have him come out with both bouts. I think this is gonna be a long term, a long term plan for both WWE and UFC, mm -hmm. especially with WWE heading to Fox next year. You know, what bigger exposure do you need before heading over to Fox? It just sucks because I want to care, but I don't. I literally give two shits about these TV deals, anything they want to promote. I don't care. If you don't put a good product in front of me, I will not care or watch. It's what I want to see in a WWE 
program, whether it be Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, even their their main show, WrestleMania. And, and speaking of Which WrestleMania, WrestleMania <laughs> Brian, what the news, like the rumor. Let's let's take this with a grain of salt, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not go overboard here and fucking just you know put all our chips in. The rumor out of this week is that Vince McMahon by 2020 wants to do two WrestleManias a year. Are you fucking kidding me? Th- th- this is a joke, right? I'm, I'm I'm sleeping. This is a dream. There's no there's no way he wants two WrestleManias a year. It that is the, sad the part most is... dumbest thing. I have ever heard out of this company. The sad I'm, part is both shows are going to sell out and they're just going to make a trillion, billion dollars off of I, it. You know what I mean? It's a it's, terrible idea. Rather that be true or not, it is a terrible idea. Because you, you put it in perspective in a couple of things. One, why would you want to do that? You don't see other big companies doing that. They have their main thing. They have once a year, which what makes it special. Whether it be the NFL with the Super Bowl, you got the MLB with the World Series. It comes once a year, and it's all on the October time. People are pumped; they know about it. That's its time with the the, the Super Bowl every time, beginning of February. WrestleMania, April, April it goes hand in hand with WrestleMania. You don't touch it; you leave it as is. You, it's it's like having it's like having these other companies doing two of their main things a year. It it loses the special and the uniqueness of that event, and you lose everything about it. You're going to want to do two WrestleManias. Imagine you being a fan, going to the the first one out of the year, whether it be somewhere in the States or Canada or whatever it is. Let's just say it was in the States or, or let's just say somewhere in North America. You go to that WrestleMania, but you know they have a, a one decent match out of the whole card, which usually is. The last five WrestleManias, there's only been like one or two matches that have been half decent. I don't believe that any of these last couple of WrestleManias have been anywhere close to what they've done in the past or even tried to overpass each other over step each other it's like they don't care anymore anyways you you go to this wrestlemania you you see there's a lot of negative more than positive and then then then, then this next wrestlemania comes around they're gonna obviously gonna go somewhere else rather than north america they'll go to mexico or the uk or australia somewhere where you know for some reason they deserve a wrestlemania um they go there and they have a 10 times better WrestleMania than the first one that you as a fan say you traveled like hundreds and millions of miles just to get to that first WrestleMania. They end up having a 10 times better WrestleMania, five-star matches, and it just blows the roof off the first one. How are you going to feel as that fan that you spent all that hard-working money to get to that one WrestleMania and feel special because of how special that WrestleMania is because it's once a year in April? How are you going to feel? You're going to feel like the bottom of a trash can because you couldn't have that special moment because some other place in the world had the second WrestleMania that year and it was 10 times better. You can't do it, Brian. You cannot have two WrestleManias. It, you, you hit it. I mean, it's no one would have two Super Bowls. No one would have two World Series because let's just say they did have two WrestleManias, right? Everyone knows WrestleMania is the first weekend of April here. So it's always going to be the second one is, oh, well, yeah. You know, it's always going to be that's It's just like the greatest Royal Rumble. You know, oh, they're trying to make that another, you know, another yearly rumble. Well, it's just always going to be the B show, no matter mm-hmm. what they do. Everyone knows WrestleMania, April 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, whatever, 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 whatever it can be. If they do another one a month later, two months later, it's just, well, that's, that's WrestleMania light. That's WrestleMania B. Look what you they know, did this really- year. Look how diluted the, the Great Royal Rumble was. People were like half caring, and then when they had a pay per view, literally a week later, for Backlash, Backlash was like literally the worst pay per view of the year. They should never do that. Yeah, it's 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 sad, but they're gonna do it just because it will sell out, and that's the issue. We can sit here and complain about Raw sucks, SmackDown sucks. Don't do WrestleMania twice. And that's but as what long as they sucks. keep selling it's the out the arenas, it's just going to keep happening. It's those fans who accept mediocrity and say and sit there, and whether they have podcasts or not, or they just tweet on the internet, they sit there and say, oh, yeah, Raw was great this week. It was entertaining. What? 
do you watch the same shit that I'm watching? It's not. It's pathetic. When you watch a character like Kevin Owens get thrown off a stage in a porter potty and then this week hide in the general manager's office for the entire show. When you have a guy like James Ellsworth, yeah, cool, the nostalgia of him returning for one night is cool. That's it, you cut it off there. But now he has more TV time in the last three weeks than a guy like Ty Dillinger. I'm not just saying because he's a hometown boy of mine. I'm not just saying it for, for biased reasons. Like Ty Dillinger, who's worked his fucking ass to the bone to get on TV, who barely gets on TV, who could have been on TV this week, but he decided to play the whole angle of Samoa Joe, um, of, of attacking him in his entrance, and that never happened. And even Samoa Joe, too. Ta- <laughs> James Ellsworth has gets more TV time than both those guys. That's sad. That To me, when I'm watching Raw and SmackDown, that's pathetic. I want to watch Raw and SmackDown because I want to see the top guys getting the TV time like they should be in good storylines and build up to the fu- to the, the next pay-per-view. Not meaningless garbage storylines where we see rinse and repeat nonsense week after week after week after week. Example, the whole Matt Hardy and, and all that stuff. I know it's not Matt Hardy's fault, but the creative minds behind that whole Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt, and the B-team is just absolutely trashed. Now that they go and reach in the cookie jar and they bring Kane back, and now you got Team Hell No back for whatever reason. Yeah, cool, the nostalgia was there for week one, but now it's completely died off, and now there's... It's it's almost like they just want Daniel Bryan to leave the company already. I'm, I'm sh- pretty sure he doesn't. He wasn't intending to come back to Team Hell No when he found out that. Oh, I thought my career was over. Now that I find out I can get back to the WWE and do the thing I've loved and my I'm passionate for, they're gonna stick me right back into something that literally was like the worst part of my entire career. It's fucking trash. It's trash. I can't. This is why I can't watch the main roster or get behind and get behind it, or agree with any of these fucking idiots out there who go on Twitter or whatever and agree and, and, and accept mediocrity. I can't do it. I, for the life of me, Brian, I cannot sit there and do it. I can't. I can't do it anymore. It may be whoa, just whoa, whoa, me. Whoa, hold up here. Hold up. Time out. Time out. Oh it's wait. Time to oh. Stop again. <laughs> Invasion. <laughs> Invasion. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I was uh, literally talking to Kyle. I said, Kyle, man, the main roster was crap. But let me tell you something about Vince McMahon and this anti-bullying campaign. And my <laughs> mic literally got cut off. <laughs> I was gone. I was like, oh, it happened again. But what's going on, guys? Hope I didn't miss too much. Here he is, the host that runs the West Coast, Michael Chow. Michael Chow, you didn't miss much. You just missed uh, oh, mostly me ranting and Brian, uh, literally, he's he's basically comparing watching Raw as a as a job rather than watching something for the fun of it. I ranted about Raw um, having its lowest viewership ratings. We have to give little Raw a round of applause. Its lowest viewership ratings ever, Yay! ever in its twenty five year history. Breaking records, baby. Breaking records. And also records. the news, the, the, the grain of salt news of Vince McMahon possibly wanting to do two WrestleManias a year. Hey, we got two World Rumbles a year. Come on. Come on. Why not? I can't. I, I said what I need to say. I'll let you go you back and listen hey, to my rant. You, you, I'm not saying anything. Hold on. Hold on. How dare you? You don't want to see a second WrestleMania and have a match called the greatest women's battle royale. The greatest. Mm. You know what? You, now you put it to, you, you put it that way. Hmm. They would each be eight hours. That's 16 hours of trash. You know what? I would gladly take that over a decent wrestling show. Hell yeah! Sign on, me up for that. On, one, <laughs> on WrestleMania, we'll have the Andre re- Memorial, and on WrestleMania B, we'll have the Big Show Memorial Battle Royale. <laughs> oh, um, man. Yeah. You know well, what? There's crickets yeah, for that, all, Brian. In all, in all fairness, if he wants to do two WrestleManias, the only logical thing I can think of is have the second WrestleMania. In another country. Because that would actually be kind of cool if you really think about it. But that's the only way I see this actually being but like, kind of cool. This is, what, this it, is what I – it went back to what I was just ranting about. Now put yourself in the, in this fan's shoes, Michael. You go to the first WrestleMania. That's obviously in April. They have to keep it with April, right? You go to that WrestleMania. You, you're, you're hyped for it. You're excited to see some – you know, the showcase, the showcase of the Immortals. You're going there to see – Top-notch matches, supposed to be the best matches out of the year, out of the entire WWE schedule. You go there, the pay-per-view ends up being mostly negative, which it's like been for the WrestleMania the last couple of years, like I said. And you have one or two decent matches. 
And then you you watch the other one that's in some other part of the world when you get, uh, later on in the year or how many months down the road they do it. They end up having the best thing ever. They get five star matches, storylines that make sense, everything clicks, and it ends up blowing the roof off. How would you feel as that fan that went to the first one, spent all that hard earned money to get to that WrestleMania? Say you came from miles away just to get to that WrestleMania, end up getting a shit card and having watched these people across the world getting a 10 times better thing than you just got. Wouldn't you be a little sour about that? I w- my only response to that is if there is a way I can see Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at two WrestleManias in one year, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Come on. I mean, were Come you, on. Were you, did, did someone send Michael Chouse and Derby Kool Aid? I swear to God. He's drinking that Derby Kool Aid. He's got to be. Well, I think that's, he, that's why he was he, late. He was on the phone with Vince. This, this is the only way that Vince says I'll turn your mic back on. You got to start plugging the second WrestleMania and two Brock Lesnar's versus Roman Reigns in in the same year. But obviously Brock Lesnar doesn't come around anymore. So guys, we're gonna see Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker, two WrestleManias <laughs> per year now. Come I'm just on. saying, like, it, but if we speak no, no, seriously, no, 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 it, it's it sucks. You they can't do. It's like what I was saying earlier, Michael. It's like the World Series. Ha- it's like the World Series happening twice a year. The NFL having yeah. two Super Bowls. It doesn't work. You can't do it. That's what WrestleMania is. It's the once a year thing that happens in April. You know it's always in April, and it makes it special. I just went to 34. Regardless of what it was and you know, what the outcome was, and I have my thoughts about WrestleMania, it, it felt special in a way that that was the once a year thing I was going to. Mm-hmm. And to experience all that, and it only happens once a year. That makes it special. You cannot ruin that by doing two WrestleManias. You can't. Okay, I, what? I just... I just feel bad for SummerSlam because you know how they usually say SummerSlam is like the WrestleMania this summer? Now if you have two WrestleManias, SummerSlam is basically like the illegitimate child of the pay-per-view schedule. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Oh. <laughs> well, you just you just make three SummerSlams and balance it all out so it doesn't really oh, matter. Okay. Yeah. No, you, have but one question... winter, you have one in the winter, you call it a winter slam, and one in the fall, <laughs> fall slam. But my question is, okay, so one of the bigger concerns is, is having WrestleMania B outshine WrestleMania A, correct? Yeah. Would would them just not airing it help at all? So let them have WrestleMania in London, no. right? Let them call people it WrestleMania. Will find a way, people will find I mean, a people, way to watch it. You, you, it they, they, they can't have that a WrestleMania type event and not televise it. Because they, they, you know viewership ratings mean something to them. But that could be its whole, that could be the whole mystique of WrestleMania B is that it's not televised and it's in another country. You know, so let's just Call it WrestleMania. It's not WrestleMania. Call it WrestleMania. Call it WrestlePalooza 3000. Call it whatever you wanted to call it. They Have it. In they another... won't do something like that. They won't. I'm sorry. I, I, as I much as you're a good be, idea, but they won't that's do it. That's a good it. idea. You know what I mean? Let them call it WrestleMania. Say, hey, you're, you're only going to get this if you're here. I think that would help people feel better about it being WrestleMania B. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you guys feel about that one. I just don't think they should have it in general. Have a have a pay per view over there. That's what they're they're just they just want something that's televised in their country. Saudi Arabia was more than fucking joyful when the Greatest Royal Rumble came over there. You can have something like uh, Night of Champions in the UK or something. Just do a, a pay per view over there. They'll be more than happy. Yeah, they're all claiming that they they want a WrestleMania, but every country wants a WrestleMania. Vince just can't make everyone happy like he wants to. He's losing his fucking mind creatively. Now he's just making all this money and just thinking. He's just. It's like the more money he gets, the more senile he's getting. <laughs> he was making smarter decisions when he was not a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. And I guess bigger news in the chat. Tiffany saying she's pregnant with Seth's baby. Seth Rollins' oh, yeah, baby. Right. So, the hey. chat. The chat, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> go show some show some love to the chat. Tiffany from That Ass Podcast is here. Also, Datila, what's going on, guys? And before we continue any further, ladies and gentlemen, we are sponsored by Extreme Wrestling Shirts right here on the podcast. ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com. Go check them out, guys. They are a fantastic WWE product website. They got WWE t-shirts. They got uh, they got uh, merchandise, all kinds of merchandises, necklaces, uh, costumes, everything that your needs are, they have on that website. And best of all, if you use the code no holds on checkout, you'll save 10% on your order. So go check them out, guys. ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com, the official sponsor of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. And I also want to give a quick shout-out to WrestleRumble.com and the folks at WrestleRumble, guys. They do a fantastic pick em contest. Uh, go check them out on Twitter at um, 
Wrestle Rumble, guys. Follow them on Twitter. Go join in. It is $10 for one entry. Join to their extreme rules. Pick them. You guys can win some cash prizes and other prizes like that. They also do MVP standings. So go check them out, guys, and uh, give them a follow. And enter in the contest at ExtremeRumble.com. Uh, extreme, yeah, I think it's Extreme Rumble. Or just go to WrestleRumble.com. It'll direct you. But uh, those are out of the way. Um, we're not really going to talk about the main roster this week because this week is the predictions for Extreme Rules as well. Um, so, Brian, uh, you will chime in for us for uh, for for NXT. Okay, because yes, I, I know you watched one thing on NXT this week. Yeah, Michael, I'm not lying. Brian watched the main event of NXT this week. Twice. I watched it twice. 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 <laughs> One one uh, with the sound off, one with the sound off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For his reasons, which we'll get to. So uh, without further ado, let's get into that NXT review. Yes, the NXT chants are here, and they're allowed to, for us to talk about the official A brand in the WWE, and that is NXT. And we got an interesting episode this week. Very, yeah. very interesting episode this week. Um yeah. Uh, side notes on it: uh, They've announced six competitors in the May Young Classic. Mm. So um, we got six. I don't, I'm not sure what the names are off the top of my head here. I didn't write them down. I really meant to, uh, but there, I know there, uh, there was one major. They they made the announcement that a former Divas champion is making her return. That's it. Yes, the... I know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, my pick for the tournament, Tony Storm. Um, I think you picked her too, didn't you, Michael? I think you picked her too, didn't you? Um, I knew that she was going to be in it, but I don't think I picked her to okay, win. I'm picking Tony Storm. I, I, can't, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't <laughs> remember the one, actually. But, uh, yes, Caitlin, the former WWE uh, Diva, because it was called the Divas division back then, will be in the right. May Young Classic. I, I got mixed things about that. I don't think that uh, she's going to be making a full WWE comeback. I think it's going to be one of those Soraya Deeb things where she gets uh, just a spot in a tournament to showcase herself, and they go over her history with the WWE, and they do like a little promo package for her. I don't think I see her going that far, but I really think Tony Sto- it's going to be Tony Storm and someone else in the final, so I'm going to go with my girl Tony Storm for this tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I kind of like the idea they did last year with Serena, and now they're bringing back Caitlyn. I, I would actually mm-hmm. like it if they, this was kind of like a thing. So every mm-hmm. year they actually bring back someone. So, like, you know, she works her butt off. Well, she's already a hard worker, but I would love to see Emma come yeah. back next year for the May Young Classic. Yeah, you so. you mentioned that. That was, oh, man, I, that'd be sick. That'd be, like, the biggest surprise ever. Can you imagine? She'd definitely be yeah. a, a, a favorite. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a, you know, I'm going to call it. Emma's coming back next year. And also, year after that, probably Ellsworth. Yeah. Ellsworth coming back to fight the women. <laughs> May Young Classic. Uh, did you, or Brian, I don't know if you, did you watch the first May Young Classic at all or catch any of the matches? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I don't remember much. I remember the pirate chick, and that's Hard about scene. it. Yeah, I yeah. didn't watch much. I'm Do you gonna remember watch the first female that... referee that's still in NXT right now? Um, Is it? No, they f- no, no. They don't. have a female referee, believe it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I saw that. I've seen yeah. her. I don't know the girl's name. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. her name either. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, a lot of the the women on NXT right now are actually from that tournament, uh, and also their champion Shayna Baszler. Um, so, yeah, yeah, definitely I, a great I, tournament. It, it was yeah, awesome. I, I I followed it a little bit, but yeah, I don't remember. So much. I, I I suggest you watch the whole thing this year. Well, Caitlyn's gonna be on there, so you goddamn right, I'm gonna watch because she is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, she's actually she's a former no she was the winner of nxt season what was that season four she yeah, beat well, out yeah, she aj was lee, lee and yeah, naomi AJ lee. Yeah. and naomi mm-hmm. and look how that worked out for her. Yeah. <laughs> <Too bad. laughs> anyways nxt this week was highlighted by the uh tag team title rematch between Undisputed Era and Mustache Mountain. Adam Cole versus Danny Burch. Aleister Black was supposed to be making an appearance and Kari Zane was taking on Vanessa Bourne. Uh, we actually opened up with Adam Cole versus uh, Danny Burch. Um, decent opening to NXT this week. Really, really decent opening. Um, I thought it was a really decent match. Man, Danny Burch, how old is this guy? Like, he, he's he's gotta be like close to the 40s. But this guy's got the athleticism and stamina and athleticism as a, I'd say a guy who's in just just getting into his mid twenties, maybe reaching for twenty eight. Okay, so I looked up his age. He's actually thirty six, so he looks a lot older than he actually is. 
I would have <laughs> thought Danny Birch was in his forties at least. When you look at a guy like him, yeah, he's, maybe it's just all the wear and tear on his on on himself. Um, but he, he looks like a J- he, he looks like a Jason Statham slash Cesaro. Yeah, <laughs> like a little like cross <laughs> combo there. <laughs> but yeah, he's actually man, he's he's decent. He's a, he's a I think they. Uh, they got something in Danny Burch. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him, and especially Oni Lorcan when he heals up. I think they're going to be a big part of the tag team division going forward. Um, or even when they get called up. Uh, actually, I, I pray they don't get called up because who knows where they'll end up. Um, AK, let's just look at the just look at uh, any big team coming out of NXT getting called up. Ascension, AOP. <laughs> can, well, what can be he- head besides the Shield? Be. Besides the Shield. And I guess to say the Wyatt family, what other big team made it out getting called up? Mm, the Wyatts? I mean, and they all split up eventually. I, they need to, I don't like when teams get called up and eventually split up. I want to see a team that stays together, like the New Day. New Day is a team that I, I, I wouldn't want ever to break up. These guys are too perfect with each other. They should just stay a tag team until the end, right up until the end. I don't yeah. like when teams split up. I like when teams are, you know, they never split. They're always known for a tag team, right? I, I don't like teams that, I, that split up. I'm not a fan of that. I figured it out. Just have all the NXT call-ups headline WrestleMania B. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? That's actually a good idea, like a WrestleMania not, for NXT. That That's it yeah. right there. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. You just have to call it like NXT Mania or something. I don't know. Call um, it whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> uh, anyways, Adam Cole ended up winning against Danny Burch at uh, the, uh, the beginning of the, uh, the show. Decent match. Uh, it actually went longer than I thought it was going to be, but uh, it, it did its part. Um, mm-hmm. well, Michael, do you have anything to say about that match? I mean, it was really just. It was. Uh, you know, I for some reason thought it would have been better. I'm not saying it was a bad match. I just thought that Adam Cole and Danny Burch are really good wrestlers. I thought it would be like, like just you know, over the top as NXT always is. But uh, it was an uh, it was a good match to do what it needed to do. Uh, for Adam Cole, man, can this guy pick a finisher? Like literally yeah. in this match, he did the <laughs> super kick, he did the tiebreaker, he did that suplex next breaker, and then he finishes him off with the shining wizard. I'm I like, think it's just all shit. his like signature moves, and he's got his uh, his uh, <laughs> that that uh, finisher that fucking knee to the back of the head, uh, mm-hmm. whatever he calls it. It's like uh, the last shot. I think it's called the last shot uh, to the back of the head. So yeah, I, I like that I- finisher. I don't. I don't see him winning major championships with that match. I remember. I remember no. Del Rio used to use that as his finisher, and uh, who else? Yeah. Um, uh, MVP used to use it and call it the drive by. Yeah. I just don't see that winning. Like I don't see that mm, putting down by. John Ooh. Cena. You know what I mean? Drive by. <laughs> mm. I feel like I've heard that on someone else's move set before. I can't put my finger on who. <laughs> um. Anyways. Uh. I think this is going to be the end, though, of Danny Birch, the whole Adam Cole shenanigans. I think where Adam mm-hmm. Cole is going to be now looking at his next opponent for the North American Championship for NXT Brooklyn. And I would assume it's Ricochet because I don't know where the hell he been. He's been missing for like two weeks. Like, like there's like, no like uh, word that he got injured or what. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, anyways, uh... Uh, the one th- cool thing that happened on NXT this week was actually like a like a whole bitch slap moment when Candice LeRae literally went right up to Shayna Baszler. He was like, I heard what you're saying about me. And like Baszler just like told her to, to stick to her being a little cute sidekick. And then Candice LeRae just slaps the shit out of Shayna Baszler and they have like this big backstage or back parking lot brawl. And like it was separated by these refs, these random refs and officials um, that are obviously on standby behind the camera, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you see you know this is the part you see i didn't like this because it has to be broken up by every single wrestler in the building mm-hmm. yeah just like the main roster mm-hmm. forget baby face forget heels I knew everyone has to way. break this up i knew you were going I knew you men were going women dogs fans everyone is breaking up this brawl <laughs> sheep um sheep <laughs> uh oh. kari zane face vanessa born uh after vanessa born calling kari zane out um uh, this was a decent match. Another girl from that. I guess they're doing a lot of these matches, a lot of the Mae Young Classic people, I think, just to get the Mae Young Classic uh, promoted, uh, the second tournament. So I thought it was a decent match. I think Kari Zane, oh, Kari Zane was literally almost losing this match. I feel like with Kari Zane, she's 
barely winning her matches now. And she was the winner of the Mayon Classic. And, Michael, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to side more with you. I think they should have gone Shayna Baszler in that win of the, the Mayon Classic because this is not what you want out of a girl who won the Mayon Classic last year, a girl that's barely winning her matches. I know it's showing that she's resilient and doing whatever she can to win, but uh, she comes out with her new finisher called the Anchor, that cross-legged <laughs> Boston Crab. Holy shit, and she torques all the way back. Like, oh, man. That's a sixth submission move. I'll give her that. I'll, I'll, I'll give her that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she calls out Baszler after. Uh, so a bunch of women calling out Shayna Baszler. And then uh, we find out that next week, I'm I'm super stoked for this, Nikki Cross, Kari Zane, Candice LeRae, and Bianca Belair, Fatal 4-Way for the number one contender. Michael, we called this. We yes, knew we were going to do something like this. So uh, we got to come to fruition next week. Number one contenders match, something we love to see. That we don't see on the main roster, shockingly enough. I'm sorry, Brian. This is something you never get to see in the main <laughs> roster. and it's, I love it because NXT does it right. We're getting a number one contenders match. We don't just get random people qualifying for title matches out of the blue. We're wait, actually wait, getting... hold, hold. What are you talking about? Okay, Didn't you know Kurt Angle made a six-person elimination match? <laughs> Number one contendership at Extreme Rules. I mean, he 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 called off the match a week later, but still, it's the thought oh, that counts. Oh, okay. Oh. You, you guys don't have a sh- you guys don't have a shark cage match at NXT. So, oh, oh yeah, God. On, I'm so mad about that. <laughs> I mean, especially because uh, who's in the shark cage? Oof. Get ready, Ellsworth is lubing up. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! By the way, Brian, did you watch the rest of the show of NXT? All I watched was the main event. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I, I didn't expect him to watch anything. Else. Um, baby steps, guys. Baby steps. Baby steps. Yeah, he was just tired by this week' main roster. Like yeah. he's just tired. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, I'm excited. Didn't, didn't didn't <laughs> I'm excited for that that main that that number one contenders match next week. And it's tough to pick who's going to be number one contender. It's you. Like each each one of these girls has a legitimate. Uh, um, shot to be that number one contender so it's gonna be interesting to see in the direction they go after it or if there's gonna be a no contest or whatnot they also hyped in two weeks Tommaso Ciampa Alistair Black for the title um so this is where it led into this the Ciampa was like uh walking in the back of the building being interviewed and then Johnny Gargano showed up uh, he told he tells him that Ciampa can't be NXT champion Alistair kind of walks away uh Gargano kind of like stops him and Black says uh let me handle it and make sure, like, your head, you know, your head's back into it. And as Aleister Black goes into the building, he suddenly gets jumped by Ciampa. And Ciampa starts like, brutally attacking Aleister Black. And there's, like, this random massage table right when they get into the building, which I found <laughs> it completely weird. It's like, oh, you want a massage here? Let me just walk right into the building. It's right there. <laughs> I, I that, that was, like poorly placed in in my opinion uh, but black sets up or gets set up on the table and Champa does like basically the Randy Orton DDT on mm-hmm. like the on the concrete floor <laughs> and as as Champa does that little bye bye thing oh man you could hear like oh, i don't know if they 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 plugged the sound there but it sounded you could you, it sounded like you could hear the the sound of uh, Alistair Black's head hitting the cement, and Aleister Black sold the shit out of it because if you go back and watch, he was putting his eyes into the back of his head. Like, it was sold so good. Like I'm talking Undertaker yeah. style. I'm liking where this is going, but like I said last week, I mean, unless, you know, Ciampa wins, where, where's this feud going for Aleister Black? Because he doesn't have a, a lot of time to build to another feud after his match with Ciampa, so... Mm-hmm. Just a little bit confused on why. I, I almost feel like this match is going to be the match at TakeOver Brooklyn. Like, I feel like they're building this as the match. But no, it's happening in three weeks at, well, now two on a TV show. So, I don't know. I, I want, I'd love to see a triple threat, but I, I, I'm feeling it's not going to be. Something's going to happen here. And I don't, and I think Aleister Black is going to get set up into uh, a TakeOver feud in two weeks. It, it's going to be... I think it's going to be a, a quick four to five week build, but it's going to be good. It's going to be good enough that they can only they only would only need four weeks to build it. 
Um, it, it would it would have to be with someone big to sell it as then you know kind of like what they did uh you know how last year uh was it uh, right. rains and yeah. and why it got sick so they threw together these high profile matches it would have to be something like that well, so I think it might be Ricochet yeah so maybe that's the reason why he's like not appearing on TV and let's just say after the match mm-hmm. that he has with Champa they just have a number one contendership match Ricochet wins and it's just built on this. You know, a huge factor, the hype of uh, yeah. Alistair Black Rick- Ricochet. Oh, I'm, well, I'm I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys remember. I called it a couple of weeks ago. You have, I, we, we were wondering where Gargano or Champa goes next. So obviously, we we see where this is going. And like I said earlier, have either one of them fight Black, and have the other, you know, cause cost them the match, the title right. match, and then you build their feud going forward again you know it kind of does a whole refresh on their feud for the next for nxt yeah. is ali the next one after that i think i think that's mm-hmm. that's where it's going right right uh cupid girl 125 joining the chat what's going on cupid girl 125 let's shout out to her um let's get into the main event nxt uh we have mustache mountain rings undisputed era for the rematch for the tag team titles and brian you get to chime in on this because you watched it as well and wow 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 if they, if there was ever a tag team match to set the bar on how a wrestling match should be wrestled in terms of technique and storytelling, right here, this match is the bar. No pun intended to the bar of the tag team match, or the tag team. This match set the bar of how a tag team match should be main evented of a show. Main evented, not just in, I'm not talking about the tag team matches at the beginning of a show or in the middle of a show. If the main roster wants to do a tag team main event, this is how they should be going down. Yeah, and my whole thing with NXT was the the flipping and the dives is great. We all enjoy. I'm a, I'm a spot monkey as much as everyone else. My big thing with NXT before, you know, I used to watch it a couple years ago, was the storytelling. I love storytelling I, way more than any kind of in-ring performance. And this this match was storytelling 101 you know besides a little hiccup at the end just the storytelling of this match is unlike yeah, anything you, i've seen on the main it, roster in in years in yeah, years you had the build-up of, of of mustache mount winning the titles on their homeland and winning it against undisputed era in, a, in an unlikely match that it would actually go down the way it did you have the the heated feud between these people over the last two months building into this match. You had the storytelling of Trent Seven in his leg uh, and of him selling the leg injury all match and how it affected the, the outcome of the match. It was so good. And Tyler Bate, my God, does this guy ever have a future? He is so good. He's ex- the way he explodes into maneuvers and he's just he's so good he is so good the guy's got an amazing future ahead of him and he's so young too he's like what 21 years old like holy shit yeah i've been watching wrestling forever i don't know who trent seven and uk john cena is i've heard of them before (laughs) i've never seen them fight ever i've never seen any other matches i saw this match and i was just i was marking out i was literally invested i was like no no like I've never the, seen these guys perform once, and just the storytelling made me care. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael, I know you want to talk about this match. I know we want to talk I, about the ending of it. <laughs> I, I liked it, and I knew what they were trying to do. But let me st- let me just say one thing. This is it tells a story, and that's the main point. And that's what I want to see. Yes, I had a problem because I was basically talking with Kyle and I was talking with Brian. And one thing I didn't like is, of course, WWE logic, but that happens all the time. Yeah. What I'm, I'm so saying is, about it. yeah, I'm, instead of throwing in the towel, which I didn't know you could actually do, <laughs> I was like, yeah. why didn't Tyler Bay just go into the ring and break up the submission hold? Okay, you can go in and break up pins. Why didn't you just go in there and break up the submission? And I just. Uh, it's, it's well, it's different with the main roster. You know, sometimes when the main roster has WWE logic, you're like, this really didn't amount to anything, and I'm a little bit pissed that this happened. But when you when I watch something like this, WWE logic did happen. But I'm like, I see what they're doing. They're trying to tell a story. So for me, it works because it was kind of going somewhere. So main roster, whenever, yeah, yeah. Whenever they do something that involves WWE logic, you're like, 
this doesn't make any sense. Why did they do this and 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 whatnot? But uh, mm-hmm. you know, finally, I, I just want to say for any of you guys who are movie buffs like myself, this kind of reminded me of the movie Rocky IV. If any of you guys saw it, when Ivan yes. Drago was about to kill yeah. Apollo. <laughs> And he was basically saying, whatever you do, promise me you will not throw in the towel. And this dude is getting his clock clean, his wife, his trainer saying, throw in the towel. And you know what? He kept his promise. He never threw in the towel. But, you know, Apollo Creed, he died. But uh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, there I you do go. agree with you. I do, I do agree with you. And I, I, I totally agree with that aspect. The only other aspect I have is you say, like, the oh, why don't you just go in and break up the submission hole? But... Can you imagine how long a match would be if that was allowed and wrestlers just did that rather than tell a story and sit there and, and not do it? Do you know how long a match would be? Especially if yeah. you have wrestlers with submission finishing moves. <laughs> I, I get yeah, like I get the fact that we're supposed to suspend our disbelief and, and it was great for what it is. Like, you know, I for a minute I forgot about the fact that he could have just jumped in there and broke up the pin. The only thing that bothered me about it is you know, when you're planning out this match, you know the ending. You know that this was going to be your ending. Don't have – don't break up the pin or the – you know, don't break up any pins yeah, that's in one that thing same they match. Shouldn't have done. Yeah, they should have done You know what I mean? They broke up pins about four times in that match. Mm-hmm. Don't do it at all if you know that's mm-hmm. going to be your ending. Right, mm-hmm. right. Or they could have had, like, a thing where, like, they broke up too many pins and the ref basically kind of, like, you know, is, like, telling uh, uh, Tyler Bate, if you come in the ring one more time – you know, you guys are going to be disqualified. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like a warning, and you can hear the refs like, hey, stay out of the ring. Otherwise, I'll just, you know, disqualify you. If you guys notice, like, at the ring post, they have, like, this little string. Do you guys notice that? And and most of the times, they're supposed to hold on to that string. Yeah, they don't hold on to it. That's, that's one of yeah. the, the rules that's has – it's in the gray area chapter of the yeah. rule book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ne- but... next time, just put the towel on the pole, make it a towel on the pole match, and everyone okay. go home happy. <laughs> okay, Vince Russo. <laughs> But oh yeah. man, that match just if I could put it into words. Mama Mia! Yes, that's right. Mamma Mia is right, Marwanalo. <laughs> oh my god, that was just it was great. Again, like I said, if WWE main roster wants to do a tag team main event, you do something like that. Exactly mm. like that. Then you get people invested into that third hour. You get people to keep to one tune in to those tag team main events in the future. Like in a future day when they have another tag team main event, people are like, oh, man, if it's anything good like the last one, I'm going to tune in and watch it. But rather than people turning off the TV halfway through Raw. <laughs> so mm. I just, and I know I, uh, I, I, discuss, I discussed it with you, Kyle. So I predict that NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, it's going to be a tag team I quit match. First person mm-hmm. to yell, I quit, loses. And I feel in this situation, Tyler Bate is going to be the one to yell, I quit. Mm-hmm. And that's when Trent Seven, he's like, how could you do it? You know, you know what that was set up for? Tyler. That was set up for a grudge match between those two at TakeOver LA. Mm-hmm. Trent Seven versus Tyler Bate one-on-one. The the the, the so-called uh, mentor of Tyler Bate against the, the learner. Like, the teacher against the, the, the student. Like, it, it just sets itself up for a, a side feud that's that tells a story. Like, it's what you want out of a, at a wrestling show. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. I'll, I'll be there at the Sable Center, and I'll have my towel ready just to throw into the middle of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Can you funny. imagine everyone just shows up at the arena with towels and just throws them all into the ring? Throw it in. <laughs> What's going on? Yep. 